What's going on, everyone? Thanks so much for joining. This is Sage from Sage Knows IT. Uh, before we get started, please hit that subscribe, like button, that bell notification, so that way when anything gets uploaded, you guys are first to see it. We greatly appreciate it. Um, today, I decided to come out of my shell, my hiatus. Um, I know it's been a while, almost like three weeks, and I apologize, not the norm. Uh, to kind of tell you guys my journey um, into the CISSP, the Certified Information System Security Professional Exam. Um, if you know this exam, you know this is one of the toughest exams to, to pass. Um, there are reports out there from other people that um, the pass-fail ratio on this one is like 50%. Um, and I've got a love-hate relationship for this exam itself, and it has nothing to do with the exam itself. It has everything to do with me. Um, anxiety has really plagued me with when it comes to this particular test as well. And a lot of it's because of, um, my inability to handle some of the, the criticisms about this particular test being ultra tough and ultra hard and, and, um, and that pass fail ratio of 50%, uh, just really kind of just killed it for me. And, um, yeah, spent 10 years on the sidelines, but I decided that I was going to go ahead and take this test with everything that's going on with this pandemic in 2020. I sat myself down and I told myself I am going to attempt to do this and I am going to pass this exam. Um, so I am going to let you guys know whether or not I passed or failed. But before I do, I wanted to go over some of the strategies that I used to attack this test. Um, and hopefully the information that I have will, will be a supplement to what you are already doing. And hopefully you will also pass um, with this uh, with these examples. And if it's helped you, please, in the comment section, please be sure that you let me know because um, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, so the very first tip that I would say when attempting um, to study and to take this exam is you've got to stay positive at all times. Positivity is an understatement like you've got to stay positive um the, during this entire journey there are going to be times where you feel like you're you know you can't do this or it's too tough or you're going to feel fatigue at times and you've got to tell yourself you can do it yeah i mean you you have to um i would also recommend maybe having a positive quote somewhere near you either in your email signature or somewhere where you can see it on a daily basis because to help reinforce that because if you get into that slump of negativity that you can't do something or it's too hard or that you're not grasping the concept of it you need a reminder to yourself a trigger to yourself to stay positive um, so please be sure that you do that um, so let's get into some of the other study habits that I that I did so I first when I started this journey in March, um, my goal was to do this with the least amount of money going into it because first off, the test itself cost $700. Um, so for that, that's a steep price of entry just to even attempt the exam. Um, so I needed to find something like I, a boot camp was not going to be ideal for me because the boot camp costs more than the exam itself does um, and probably three times as much for the resources as well that you can actually obtain. So um, what I did is I started with Cyber IT. Um, it's kind of been my go-to. I started this when I did my security uh, security plus um, like six or seven years back, I started with Cyber IT and I've always just kind of kept them here. But this time I decided to um, enroll in their pro plan so that I can get access to a couple of additional resources. So um, I took the Kelly Handerhands uh, video and if I slaughtered her name, I apologize, no disrespect meant, um, but she is a fantastic lecturer, teacher, professor, guru, mentor, and I, I highly recommend her CISSP's course. That was the foundation of everything that I, that I was doing. Um, so and it's it's a pretty lengthy course so i, I recommend um that you take them in chunks um, i used a 1.5 on the audio speed to kind of also help me through it as well um and that that helped me as well i kept a notebook kept notes um and after every module that she would go through i would use this the cyber it's lab for the simulation test 
um, which I believe is given by Kaplan, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I would supplement that. Take a module test. Take a module test. And one of the things I liked about the Kaplan test is it would tell me where I would, where where my strengths were and where my opportunities were. And I would constantly jot those down. Every time I would get something wrong, it would give me an explanation. I would jot that explanation down and commit it to memory. Um, and I would also use another technique, which we're going to talk about a little bit later, which I think also should go hand in hand with your study in itself, because uh, we need to start doing this as a community more often. Um, but we'll get into that in a bit later. Um, so after I did that, um, I always feel like just like security in, in layers, you also have to do education in layers. So I decided to you to go through some YouTube lectures as well. And one of my favorite ones and was also instrumental in my studying habits is Sagar Bansal's CISSP masterclass. I'll put a link in um, in the notes here. And also you can go to my, my blog and it'll be there as well. But um, his masterclass was amazing. Um, I like the fact that he would break things down into um, terms that were easier to understand. Um, and not a lot of good analogies that he would use, um, real world examples. Um, and just kind of give you like one of them that I liked that kind of just stuck with me um, is like fire extinguishers and data centers and which ones um, would really apply. And he would say like class A's are used for, think of ash or like paper and wood. Um, or think of when you think of class C, think of like um, electronics or computers. Um, those are for electro electricals. Um, so I, I like that and that stuck with me and that helped me understand it a lot better um, from that aspect of it. Um, and if you decide to go over to to him, just make sure that you guys let him know that I sent you guys over there in this comment section. I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, don't get anything from it, but it's it's always good to pay it forward, and this is my way of paying it forward. Excellent material there. Um, I also use Colin Weaver's IT Dojo, um, where he has the questions of the day for CISSP. So we'd give two questions or three questions a day, and he would do a great job of explaining why things were wrong and why things were right. Um, so I thought that that helped as well. Um, so from there, I came to a point in my studying where I felt like the Cybrae's um, test was not as effective as I needed it to be. Um, I was growingly getting frustrated. Um, and my frustration had everything to do with some of the questions um, where the answers were like, there were like eight answer options on there. And I had to take a step back and I was like, there is just no way that the CISSP has that many quite like that many answers to one question. Um, and I was consistently not getting them wrong, but not getting them fully right. Right. Um, so a lot of them would be like H like option E would be H I A B C D. Um, and hardly any of them would be like one or two options there. So that was entirely frustrating because had I got those particular answers right, I would have consistently gotten a, a passing score. Um, so I, I, I had, I took a step back and I said, I need to find something that's going to simulate this experience a little bit better for me where I can kind of understand it more. Um, so I decided to go ahead and pick up and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys here. But I, this is part of my blog here where, where I did that. I'm going to talk about that in a second here. But um, so I decided to pick up the practice exam for the uh, from the IC Squared's official practice. I got it off of Amazon itself. I think this is the second edition, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I didn't. I'm going to be honest with you. I bought the book, got delivered here, never opened it up um, at all. Reason being is and this is not the study guide this is the practice test so this all this thing here just has nothing but like questions and answers um because for me reading this book wouldn't be helpful for me um it was it would be monotonous in itself so all i wanted it for was just for the practice to have access to the pack to practice exam online so that way you can kind of keep track of my progress as well um so that's what i got it for um registered the book got the practice exam online and every week um, I would supplement two, I, I would do um, my early weeks, I would do 
two practice exams for the IC squared and one of the Kaplan at Cyberry and kind of just interchange them, interchange them, interchange them there. Um, so that way I, I'm still getting the information I need that's frustrating on the Kaplan side, but I'm also getting the information in a more, uh, a more simulated fashion, like that's true to the test itself. Um, so I did that. And for the most part, I was using 60 questions um, at the beginning of the week and then doing 150 at, on the weekend. Um, so just kind of, so that way I, managing burnout is really important and so that's kind of what i did so um once i got a passing like i was consistently getting passing score or i was plateauing um from you know fr from the test that i was doing i decided to go ahead and, and practice my exam um and i or schedule my exam and the reason why i scheduled it is because once you're on the clock your brain works harder whether you realize it or not your brain works harder um you're more focused you're more lasered in um, because you know that the money's on the table, the time is coming near, you got to pass this exam. You know, that that's the best motivation that you can have. So scheduling your exam for me, I started this process in March. Um, by June, I said, it's time to do it. Um, I was going to schedule it for like July. Um, but with the pandemic going, there was limited space available. So I ended up doing it early, um, August or so scheduling it early August. Um, so don't delay once you've gotten to yourself to that certain point, um, where you're consistently, you know, plateau in there. Um, it's time to schedule the exam. Okay. Um, it's my opinion that the practice exams are made to be more difficult for you. And it's not to say that the actual exam is or isn't. It's just, I, I think that it's the purpose of the practice exam is to hit on everything um whereas the actual exam may not hit on everything so um just you know putting that out there for you guys um all right so then the next thing there is you know kind of what i was going in line with with um previously is you got you got to graph your your progress because this is the only way that you can measure it um so i am putting this out here this is what i scored from where i captured from june to the day of my exam in august um and as you can see, I was kind of touting the line between 65 and 75 um, on a consistent basis. Um, I took a pretty big dip on the Kaplan test like in August, but a lot of that was just fatigue. Like I was just fatigued. Um, I took the test two days later and ended up scoring a 90. And I, I just, I knew I was ready. So at that point I stopped all the testing, going through my notes and you know went after the the test so um that's where i went from there so you know be sure to start graphing your your progress if you guys need this graph just go to my website www.sagenosit and subscribe um i give all these tools available um for free so you guys can just you know it's there for you guys i'm here to help as best i can so go ahead and use that so um next thing is you know, if you if you haven't heard the theme um, of this entire video is you got to document, 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 document. And one of the documents that I did was my blog. Um, so what I was consistently doing is that every time that I would get something consistently wrong in a particular category, I would blog about that itself. So that way I could kind of commit it to memory as well as to understand the concepts and bring it to you guys. Um, and to bring it to myself as well. Um, but I, I think that we need to do a better job um, of just putting our content out there um, so that other people can help as well. Information sharing is important and it's big for me. Um, and if I can help someone with a concept that they were struggling on, I felt like I'd, I've done my due diligence. Um, and uh, I, I think that we should all do that. So um, I started this blog in March to coincide with my studying habits um, for the CISXP. Um, and it's helped me tremendously. Um, and I appreciate everyone who was subscribed to, to the blog itself. Um, it's really helped me keep it going. And I apologize for the last couple of weeks that I've been kind of out of focus and not posting new content, but that's going to change now that, you know, everything is kind of behind me with the test itself. So without further ado, did I pass? the CISSP exam. 
I did. I passed the CISSP exam. I was elated. I left that facility. They gave me the paperwork. I left the facility. I didn't look at the paperwork until I got to the to the elevator. Um, I looked around to make sure that nobody was watching. And I just turned the paper and broke down and cried. And I was excited. Like, this is a personal journey that spanned more than 10 years uh, for me. Um, it was plagued with a lot of negative energy and um, an anxiety of my own doing. And to have come this far to pass this exam has just been amazing. It's for me, it's an amazing accomplishment for myself and for my my journey. And um, and I want to share that with the world like you can do it like you can. Um, it's not just a catchphrase, you know, si se puede. You can. You can do it. Um, but you've, you've got to be willing to fight for it. And you've got, to, you, you've got to understand that anxiety and procrastination is designed to hold you back. You have to take the reins and push forward. Um, whenever you feel like have a quote, a positive quote, where you see it every single day. So when those days where you are down and in the dumps and you feel like you're not getting anywhere or that you're stuck you see that quote it reminds you that you can do it um that's the best advice that i can get like if i can go back in time and tell my past self what i know now that's what i would say it's, dude stop procrastinating stop feeling this anxiety like you're gonna waste so much of your life force worrying about something when you just need to just go out and do it so um with that being said I hope this information was helpful for you guys. Um, again, all the links will be in the in the show notes here, but you can also visit my blog, www.sagenosit. I have all this information available, um, including the graphs that I used um, as well. I know it's a simple graph, um, but it's I think it was helpful. So I, you know, instead of you having to recreate the wheel and create your own, you know, you you can use the one that I used in Google Sheets. So. Um, all right. So thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks so much for checking out the replay. Greatly appreciate you. All of my credentials are here. Here. Uh, I got to get this camera angle right. There you go. <laughs> there we go. It's over there. Um, just go ahead and hit, hit me up um, and let me know. So thank you so much for joining. Y'all know the drill. Keep it real.